Hi, my name is Michael Lind. I'm the Policy Director of the Economic Growth Program at the New America Foundation. Uh, with us today is Dr. Thomas Pally, who has just published a paper at New American Contract entitled America's Exhausted Paradigm. Uh, Dr. Pally, welcome. Thank you. Uh, what do you mean by the exhausted paradigm? Uh, let me put this in context. Uh, the debate so far about the global economic crisis has focused on financial and regulatory failures, uh, which uh, contributed to it. But according to you, were not the underlying factors. Uh, that's absolutely right. Um, it's very natural to see this in terms of a crisis on Wall Street. That's where the headlines are. You hear about things like the Bernie Madoff. Ponzi scheme and the AIG and Merrill Lynch pay scandals. But this crisis has its roots in something far deeper, and it, that something is not yet being discussed by policymakers. What I say is that going back to around 1980, we changed the nature of the American economy, and we put in place a whole new set of policies that changed our business cycle. And this new business cycle required asset price inflation, stock market booms, it required borrowing by consumers to spend and to make up for the wage stagnation. And the economy had an underlying weakness in it. The longer you went on, the more indebted you became, and therefore the weaker the economy became. And the weaker the economy became, then the more you needed an asset bubble to get it going. And we see this taking place in the 1980s with the stock market boom and house price inflation. We see it taking place again in the 1990s with a bigger boom, this time in the stock market, the internet uh, uh, dot-com bubble, and also very high house price inflation. Now, what happened is, along with this new economy, we set up a new globalization project for the U.S. economy that basically encouraged firms to take their production offshore, take their manufacturing or jobs offshore, and it replaced domestic manufacturing with a huge flood of imports. That, which yeah, inexpensive imports. Inexpensive imports. And people, of course, go for the inexpensive mm. imports because they're suffering wage stagnation. But that process that flawed global engagement then further weakened the economy, and that in turn meant that we needed an absolutely huge bubble to restore growth. And you, again, the proof of this, you look back to what was going on in 2001, despite very aggressive stimulus policies, low interest rates, we had a long-lasting jobless recovery. And that pushed the Fed to lower interest rates. It did indeed create a bubble, but we needed the bubble to get going. Without those policies, we would never have had a, a recovery at all. But according to your analysis, if those con underlying global macroeconomic conditions have not changed significantly, uh, then isn't there a danger that we will just have a third or fourth or a fifth bubble uh, in our future? And if, if we can get out of this pattern of bubbles, mm -hmm. uh, what is your scenario for long-term sustainable growth, both in the U.S. and the world? Well, well you're absolutely right. If the model remains unchanged, then the only way to escape economic weakness is to create another bubble, because that's the only way growth can be. Now, that's not how we're talking about the problem at all. We're talking about the problem as if financial, more financial regulation was needed mm -hmm. and financial uh, incentives were the problem. Well, yes, they are a problem because they produce bad outcomes, but fixing them will not fix the deeper problem. In fact, it sort of sets up a paradox. If we fix financial regulation and we fix incentives, then we make bubbles impossible, and then we no longer even have the bubble as an engine of growth. So we just have stagnation. We have complete stagnation. So that means we, we do indeed have to fix the bubbles, but we have to get off the addiction of bubbles. And the only way to get off that addiction is by changing the macroeconomic paradigm. And that's why macroeconomics is really the cause of this crisis. Now, this, can this be done by the U.S. unilaterally, or does it take a global coordination? There's lots that the U.S. can do regarding itself. But we have so woven ourselves into the global economy, our trade deficit is so large, our trade agreements are so extensive, 
and our corporations have now shifted production into these hu these gr global production networks that we're going to have to work with the uh, our partners in the global economy. But if they are recalcitrant to change, that's when things get difficult, and then we may need some unilateral action. Well, I uh, thank you, Dr. Pally. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it.